Peek in there. <laughs> there we are. Good girl. In today's video, I want to talk about uh, Mira's basket. Uh, I thought video is the best way to answer most, if not all, of those questions. I'll try and answer those today in the video. Where did I get the basket? That's a question that's often asked. Uh, this has come from a company called Uline.com. They are a warehouse supply company, uh, but they have all kinds of products. They have these baskets or these crates, these storage crates. They come in a, a few different sizes. The thing about these is because the company is set up for larger volumes, warehouse locations, the minimum order when I bought this was three and it probably still is. So that's about $100 for three baskets. But uh, you could also just use them for storage at home. They're super useful and, and robust. So it's not so bad. Initially, the cost is a bit high, but there are other baskets. Maybe where you live, you can find something that, that works uh, for you and your dog. Uh, Size-wise, it is uh, 22 inches long. It is 16 inches wide, and it's about eight and a half inches deep. But uh, I found that this actually works out the best considering that uh, even at this height with it on the rack, the lip sits about a meter from the ground, uh, a little bit more than three feet. So that's quite a jump for Mira to come in and out of the basket. Uh, and I wouldn't want to go any higher. And she's quite comfortable in this and, and it's stable. So that works out well. See, all the links I'll put in the description below. Uh, how is it mounted? Pretty simply, actually. I have a, uh, a rack from the Salsa Black Burrow, which I had previous. And this uh, custom dog packing bike is basically built around two things, really. Uh, the rack has four mounting points, which use an M8 bolt through there. So quite a bit larger than the normal M5 that gets used as a water bottle screw. The rack is rated for 100 pounds. With Mira, the, the food and my clothes, I'm under that 100 kilogram mark. The basket is simply mounted to the rack with uh, high quality zip ties. They're the T and B brand. These ones are, the ones that I've been using are rated for 70 pounds and a really wide temperature range. They're actually metal core. And you can find those at electrical supply or fastener locations. Uh, one important thing is the positioning of the basket. So the basket and the bike are set up so that basically the, the middle point of the basket or the middle point of Mira's weight is directly above the rear axle. If you had any choice to move it forward, that would be better than having it hanging off the back, that cantilevered setup. And that's the problem with having a, a regular mountain bike and a basket of this size and the dog. When it cantilevers off the back, the weight balance is, is shifted, which means that you don't have as much control. The tires don't grip as much. And so in turns, they'll tend to understeer and, uh, and slide out. So it's, it's very important to have the bike balance. Like, like with the Salsa Black Burrow, the bike is actually right here. You can see the bike is actually about eight, eight and a half inches longer in the wheelbase. And that space happens here so that I have room to bring the basket close to where I'm sitting, close to my weight and not hit my legs on it. I can't emphasize enough the importance of padding, both around the rim where a dog's head would sit um, or, or where they lean against it, and then also inside. So here what I have, this is a Cordura cover that was put together by uh, Scott at Porcelain Rocket some years ago. And uh, so it's uh, Cordura with uh, brass grommets. And then I've used um, three millimeter nylon or purlon cord and just pop some holes through the basket to secure that. And so that's secured all the way around the front, good padding. And then as the padding wears out, I can simply buy another pool noodle, slice it down the bottom, and uh, and then fit it back on here, retie the cord. And then inside, I have uh, multiple layers of closed cell foam. So uh, these are the Z rest or Z rests. And I think I have, uh, it's folded in half each layer and um, three panels, so in total six. And then I have two layers that I use inside the tent. One I, is for Mira, to uh, give her some comfort and warmth, protect the floor of the tent. And then the other one I put below my air mattress 
to protect from any sharp objects, thorns possibly that I've missed in sweeping the ground before I put the tent down and uh, prevent punctures in my air mattress. Typically how this is, how we're using this Mira and I is on any flat roads, asphalt, dirt that, you know, they're pretty quick, pretty easy to ride. Mira will be in here. She stands up or she lays down. When she stands up, um, you can imagine my, my back is sort of in here. She'll actually lean against me. Uh, or, or if we're riding downhill, she'll lean against me often. So I know where she's positioned. I can sort of feel her and it gives her an extra piece of support, an extra point of support, to keep her stable. But often she'll lay down here and so she'll usually have her head out to one side or the other. And that's where that padding comes in handy. So as we, um, you know, when we go up a hill, that 40 pounds that she weighs, I like to get it out. So I'll just say out and she'll jump out of the basket. And what I do, so, it's a long way it's a meter so either i'll reach back and grab her harness and and lower her down a little bit or often i'll use a leash so the leash is attached to this harness um, this is uh, a lightweight version of the julius k9 harness this uh, front portion goes around just in front of her chest below her neck and then this belly band sits underneath there there's an attachment point on the back, so that's uh, sort of in her shoulder area. And then there's a, a handle here that I can either reach underneath the, the harness in total or just grab the handle and I can reach out and lower her back down to the ground. Often, I'll have it connected to the leash, the Rough Wear Roamer leash, and it's in the five and a half to seven foot range. What I do is I connect this around my waist and then this length um, is enough that I can have Mira down on the ground and then back up in the basket and there's not enough really to get entangled in the wheels or anything like that. So, and I use the leash for a couple of things. One, keep her under control in traffic or around, maybe around other dogs even. I can lift her up and put her in the basket if I needed to, if a dog got too aggressive. And then the other big thing is uh, Mira doesn't often look at the map. <laughs> and so she doesn't know how far we're going to go throughout the day. And she just lives in the moment. And so that way I can control how far she's running, how fast she's running, simply with the leash. If we're out in the open of the countryside, dirt roads, and there's no traffic around, uh, then I'll just let her roam. And she'll run off and grab a stick or go find some water, or some shade, and then she'll take a little break and then she'll catch up. Yeah, that's how we work it. On rolling terrain, we could do it as much as a, as a hundred times throughout the day. And that's a lot. So I'll, I'll slow down to a, a comfortable speed for her to jump out. And then I actually do stop and put a foot down for her to jump back in. That way she's not going to miss it. Um, we, I don't want her to be hurt. This basket ends up being quite a snug fit for Mira. Uh, she's got room to move around, but when she's laying down in the basket, she's actually pushing it up against the sides. And that actually increases safety and comfort. Dogs kind of like that den feeling, and it means that she doesn't move around too much when she's laying down, so the handling is predictable for me, and she's just more comfortable. If she's more comfortable, she's safer. And because she's not going to jump out, she's not going to shift around, and she's not going to get injured by the hard surfaces of the basket on rough roads. The amount that Mira runs really depends on the terrain. So she's, she's not often running full tilt, although she does. Um, on long hills, long climbs like we have around here in Oaxaca, then she'll, she'll be out, and then she'll be walking beside me or near me for, you know, several kilometers. Uh, if it's rolling terrain, then she's walking for a section or running and then back in the basket. So it's never at a high pace for long periods of time. If it's at a long period of time, it's a slower pace. On single track, uh, that's where she probably goes the fastest, where she's running full tilt, whether it's downhill or on the flats. Then she'll be, um, she'll be either out ahead or behind me. And I've taught her the command behind. And so if she's running behind me, then I'm the, I get to interact with other trail users before she does. So it could be people or animals, livestock, um, you know, it could be someone's horse or burrow. And then that way I can sort of stop her and you know, we have a safe interaction, a good interaction. And then also I can see the trail. <laughs> That's the other thing. But she, she runs anywhere from a half to a full marathon 
most days. So that's a lot and it means that I need to keep an eye on her pads of her feet and her joints. I ride on a consistent basis. The pads obviously uh, develop a thicker skin so they're very tough but I do carry dog sled booties so they're lightweight and inexpensive I think they might be only three dollars a piece and this is definitely Mira's safe place I can you know go to a shop to a store a little tienda go to grab some food or a drink and I can just lean the bike up against the wall and then she'll just be sitting here in the basket protecting the bike uh, sometimes I've come out and she's taking a nap and other times I've come out and there'll be, uh, you know, half a dozen or more people taking selfies with Mira. Uh, so, so both happen. But she's definitely uh, comfortable inside the box. So I'll talk about the pros and cons uh, of, of this setup and partly in relationship to using a single wheel trailer. She is, she's at a height where she's protected. Whereas with a trailer down low, then that's something where another dog, if it was aggressive, could, could reach. Uh, the weight is positioned higher on the bike you know so we you know we tend to want to keep things down low for for control uh, it is more or less permanently attached well i could remove the zip ties i couldn't remove this easily to go for a ride with friends on a on some single track or something like that it's going to stay as it is whereas with a trailer you know at a mountain lodge or one of the eco centers around here or even at home it's easy just to disconnect go for a ride and then reconnect if you had a trailer weight distribution so with the basket it's mainly over just one wheel whereas a trailer a lot of it is shared between the wheel of the trailer and the rear wheel of your bike the other con is because it is so high it's a it's a athletic move for a dog to jump in and out so if you had a smaller dog you would almost definitely need to lift them up and lift them back out onto the ground and so that's uh, more effort on your part whereas with a trailer most dogs can jump or just step in and out of the trailer easily so pros why obviously there's more pros than cons otherwise we wouldn't be using this so the the basket is uh, simple and reasonably compact and lightweight compact it is much shorter uh, in overall wheelbase than it would be with the trailer even if you have a regular mountain bike this is only eight inches longer whereas you're going to have several feet of trailer uh, out the back and when it's unweighted it does trailers will bounce and sometimes they don't track very well as they're bouncing uh, and that can be hard on the wheels and the bearings and it also is not enjoyable to ride honestly uh, but with this uh, I don't have that problem it's uh, it's very compact and I often forget that it's on here when I'm riding I'm so used to it now the nice thing about the basket and where it is here is that it positions Mira very close to me and so even though it's higher She's actually very close to the center of mass, which is me on the bike. And like I mentioned before, Mira actually leans against me when she stands up. So I know where she is. If I hit the brakes, I can feel her push against my back. And if I'm turning left or right, she, I can feel that on there. And so she's basically surfing in here. It's terrific. She, she does a great job. Um, and I can just reach back. I can give her a little pet. I can give her a treat. It's super. I, I, that's one of the best, best things about it. So whether you had a basket in the back of the bike or up on the front of the bike, it's nice to have that, you know, that, have your dog within reach. You know, that's a, that's a yeah, real big plus. And the other thing that's super cool is that if I'm riding towards people and they see Mira, her, her head hanging out, and often with her rec specs on, her goggles, her dog goggles, uh, then people see this and they're smiling but I'm so close to it, it's like they're smiling at me. And that's a really nice way to move through the world where everyone is happy to see you. It's terrific. When they see her, they, most people light up.